Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you all of the things that I picked up during the Sephora sale. I really didn't pick up that much during the sale, but there were a couple key items that have really intrigued me that I really wanted to try out. One of them being this thermal brush from Maine and another one being the new bomb foundation from Anastasia. I've already played around with these a couple times, so I have some initial thoughts on them already, but I'm going to be testing them out again with you. And I also have a couple other things that I got in PR that I figured I might as well just test out at the same time. They are some like new fun products from Sephora. So I figured might as well just slip them into this video. Why not? Let us first discuss the main thermal brush because I know you guys are really curious about this. I've been getting so many questions asking me to give you an update as quickly as possible because a lot of you seem to be really intrigued by this device. So this is essentially a heated round brush. You're basically supposed to use this to give yourself kind of like a faux blowout type of look. If you've been interested in something like the Dyson Air Air wrap because it gives you that really beautiful like blowout look this is a really great alternative another really great option because it's first of all far less expensive i believe it was 130 dollars canadian especially if you have hair that doesn't get like volume super easily this might work better for you because it is actually heated so you're gonna get a little bit of like a longer lasting result with something like this i'm gonna be so honest with you guys when i first took this out of its packaging i was slightly disappointed just because it felt really, really cheap. It's very heavy on the plastic. It's very lightweight. It kind of gives like children's toy vibes, which is obviously not the biggest deal in the world, but I don't know. I was just a little bit disappointed with the way that this tool actually felt. And then when I turned it on, I was like, oh, <laughs> this is really giving me toy vibes. Listen to this. Kind of funny and it just makes me feel actually a little bit nostalgic i don't know if that's what they were going for when designing this but that's the vibe that it gives off for sure so with that said it's a very simple tool to use there's just one button on here and it's the power switch so you can't control the heat settings so i have already tried this but i tried it when my hair was already straight so i just ran the tool through my straight hair and i just gave it a little bit of a curve and it gave a really nice curve to my hair and it worked really nicely and i actually really liked the effect that it gave but i'm really curious to see if it will work on my curly hair. I actually had perfectly straight hair this morning and I took a spray bottle to it <laughs> to get my curls activated. And we are gonna see if we can get my hair from curly to like a blowout style with just this tool. I really have no clue if this is going to work or not. I don't know if it's gonna be able to get close enough to my root to get my root looking smooth, but hey, we're gonna find out. I'm just gonna spray a little heat protectant in my hair. This is a hot tool, so definitely be sure to do that. Just wanna make very clear that this is to be used on dry hair. You cannot use this on wet hair. Okay, I'm gonna start by just brushing my hair through and just kind of twirling the brush at the same time and seeing what this does. Oh shit, it actually worked. I was so prepared for this not to work on my curly hair and it actually made it smooth. And look at that nice little bounce at the end. Let's do this chunk over here. So I'm just gonna brush it through once, brush it through twice, and then just kind of twirl the hair around the brush. Oh my God, that that is, that is, Wow, let's just keep going and see see how this whole layer turns out. What I do really like about this brush is that it's very intuitive to use. Like it's just easy. For example, something like the Dyson Airwrap, while it's honestly like a fantastic tool and I love the Dyson Airwrap, it does definitely take some getting used to. You have to figure out how to make it work with your hair. Or something like this is so easy to use. You just take your hair and you essentially just brush it and twirl it. So to get to my roots, I'm just going underneath the hair and twirling it, which is also giving me some more volume at the same time, which is really nice. Okay, first layer is done and it looks fantastic. I was a little bit worried that I would burn myself a lot with this tool because the bristles aren't hot, but it's the plate behind the bristles that, that obviously is the heat source. So I was a little bit worried that I would burn myself easily with it, but no burns yet. <laughs> and I don't really see that being an issue. I should also say like it gets hot enough where it obviously, you know, gets the work done, but it doesn't get super crazy like scorching hot i do like the idea of using a tool like this um rather than just going in with a blow dryer because especially with my hair type if i do want a super smooth blowout look it's hard for me to get that with just a blow dryer on my own um typically my hair will still have a little bit of frizz to it just because i'm not really able to give myself the right amount of tension that my hair needs to get it super smooth and i find typically to get my hair to be super smooth and for it to 
actually lasts. I have to use both a blow dryer and then some type of like direct heat tool. But this pretty much eliminates the need for a blow dryer, which is pretty great. Like what? It's so cool. I love this thing. So yes, this does feel a little bit cheap, but it does work and it works really nicely. I am noticing that it is kind of pulling out my hair a little bit, which isn't that surprising. I mean, if I use any type of round brush, my hair is gonna be coming out. So I'm not too concerned about that, but it's something that I am noticing. I do wish that this had um, heat settings though, that you can make it either like less hot or more hot depending on your hair type. Like my hair could probably use just a little bit more heat to get it ultra, 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 ultra smooth, especially if I'm starting curly, a little bit more heat would be nice, but. It's still working. I just feel like I'm, I have to go over the pieces quite a few times. I am truly thrilled with the results. I did not think that this tool would be able to have enough tension or enough heat to be able to get my hair from as curly as it was to now as, as smooth as it is. Just to finish things off, I'm gonna put in a little bit of oil. This is my Vegamore Hydrate Weightless Repair Oil. This is actually something that I would definitely recommend to pick up during the sale. It's one of my new favorite hair oils. It's so good at making your hair look super shiny. It smells incredible and it's pretty lightweight. So it will not weigh down your hair. I feel like I'm having a really good hair day right now. Oh my God. So now I'm gonna zoom you guys in because we are gonna play with the Anastasia Balm Foundation. So this foundation has been very, very, very heavily hyped up on social media. A lot of people have been talking about it and it really did sound like something that would be so up my alley because it's essentially like a serum and foundation had a baby. It's supposed to be really hydrating, really lightweight, just kind of give you that perfect veil of coverage without making your skin look heavy. But I tried this only one time so far, okay? So I don't have definite thoughts on it just yet. <sighs> But I, I really didn't love it. I found that it made my skin look a little bit weird. <laughs> like, I don't know how else to describe it. It definitely looked very hydrating on the skin, but it also accentuated my skin in a very, very strange way. It's really hard to put into words, but it's enough where I kept looking in the mirror and like moving my face around as I was looking in the mirror and just being really confused at how the foundation was sitting on my face because I felt like it just looked really off. I did apply it with my fingers. I thought that it would be a great way to apply this foundation because it is so balmy and serumy. I felt like it would just melt in really nicely with just fingers, but I actually don't feel like that was the best way to use this. Because I was rubbing my skin with the product, I felt like it was really attaching to any dryness that I had and it just accentuated it and didn't make it look great. There is potential to turn it around. I do see the potential, so we'll see. Before I go in to apply that though, I do wanna try this. I didn't pick it up during the sale, but I did get it in PR, and this is a new product from First Day Beauty. It's the Bronze and Glow Drops with Niacinamide, and it's essentially like a drunk elephant debronzy alternative. I'll often mix these types of products with my foundation just to add like a bronzy glow, but because this is a bomb foundation, you can't do that. So I wanna see how this applies on just bare skin and what effect it gives. I did already swatch it and there's no glitter to it, which is great because there are a couple of these that look really nice on the skin, but when you look up close, it does have some heavy glitter and then it just makes your entire face very glittery, which I do not like. That's a little bit scary. <laughs> It does feel very serum-like, not as thick as the Drug Elephant Deep Bronzy. Um, don't be alarmed by how red my face looks. That's not the product, that is just my skin. My skin gets really red whenever I rub it, so we're gonna have to let it cool down for a sec before we like examine how that made my skin look. But from what I'm seeing, considering how pigmented it looked when I first squeezed it out, I actually don't feel like it made my skin look super bronzed. Um, it didn't really add much color, but I definitely have a little bit of a glow. Granted, I don't want these types of products to make me look too bronze because then it can look a little bit crazy, but I do want a little bit of something. And it is called the Bronze and Glow Drop, so I'm getting the glow, but I'm not really getting the bronze. My camera just died. I had to switch out my camera, so if things look different, it's because I'm using a different camera. We're gonna move on now to the foundation. First of all, before I even get into applying this, I just wanna quickly give you what this foundation is all about. It says that it's a first of its kind, solid serum boosted skin tint for a sheer to light coverage, delivering a natural finish with eight skin loving ingredients. So I ended up getting the shade five. It does not match me perfectly. It's a little bit too yellow for my liking. I'm curious to see how it applies with a brush by going in with the brush to the foundation stick and then to the face. So I'm just gonna use the Sigma brush. This is the F47. It's like an angled synthetic. And I'm just gonna paint the product onto the brush, stipple it onto the skin. 
already I actually like it more. And this is already giving me a much smoother application. The coverage is definitely very, very, very light. A lot of my redness does still peek through and I'm able to layer it slightly, but this is not gonna give you anything close to a full coverage. This might be crazy for me to say because I am a dry skin gal, but I do actually feel like the finish of this is too glowy for my liking. I don't really love to start off with a foundation that is this glowy because I know that by the end of the day, I am going to be pretty shiny. Even though I have dry skin, I do still get shinier as the day goes on. Listen, I can't give you like my full final thoughts right off the bat, but I've been <laughs> trying makeup for a long time and I really can tell when a product is heading in a good direction and when a product is heading in like a not so great direction. And not that this is bad, but I just don't feel like this is going to be my cup of tea. I just feel like it's a little bit too glowy. I actually feel like the coverage is a little bit too sheer for my liking. I do like to have a little bit more buildability to my everyday foundation. And because it doesn't give that much coverage and it just kind of I don't know, very lightly evened out my skin tone, all I'm getting is just a lot of shine and I kind of just look oily. And honestly, if I'm not crazy about it, immediately after applying it, there's no way <laughs> I'm gonna be crazy about it six hours from now because it should be at its peak, at its best after first applying it. I'm just gonna apply a little bit of concealer. This is my Armani Luminous Silk. I really do like this concealer, it's 4.75. It's like my perfect shade and I really like the finish of it and gives really nice coverage too. Another fun and exciting product that I picked up that I have not yet tried, so this is going to be my first impression, is the Glossier Cloud Paint Seamless Cheek Color in the shade Dune. This is their cloud paint, but bronzer version. Here's what the color looks like. Looks like a great bronzer shade. To blend it, I feel like I could use my fingers, but I'm just gonna use a brush and just pat it in. It's definitely melting very easily. I will say this pairs nicely with the foundation because it's such a sheer bronzer. There's a lot of translucency to it. So it's looking very natural, which works nicely with the light coverage skin tint. I do feel like the shade might be a touch too warm for my skin tone right now. I think this would work better for me when I get a little bit more tan. So give me like two months and I think <laughs> I think I'll like this a little bit more. Over the last couple of like try on videos that I've done with new makeup products, I feel like I've been so lucky and like all the products work out so nicely and I'm like loving the look by the end of it. But I think my luck is catching up with me guys because I'm just not, I don't think I like it. The formula is fine. I don't feel like it's really unique. It's not anything like that's exciting me. I definitely have so many cream bronzers that work and look exactly like this that are maybe even better tones for my skin tone. It's doing its job, but it's not, you know, passing with flying colors. I thought I would be more excited about that, but I guess not. <laughs> okay, for blush, we're gonna be using NARS Dolce Vita. This is actually their new talc-free formula. So this is not a new color, but it is a slightly adjusted formula. And I've actually never tried this color, even though it's been around for a really long time. I've never tried it, and it really looks like such a beautiful, like rosy, brownie nude. Feels very, very, very smooth. Ooh, this is a good color. This is a beautiful color. This is kind of like a, I just spent a little bit too much time in the sun type of color. I'm also just gonna quickly apply some of my Drift Mascara from Tower 28. For the lip, I have two new products that I'm very excited to try. These are the new Clinique lipsticks. Look at this stunning, gorgeous packaging. I love, love this metallic green component. It's so fun. This is their new lipsticks and this one's the shade Sugar Pop beautiful light baby pink. And then this gloss from Charlotte Tilbury, which I've already tried. I have so many thoughts on, <laughs> so I'll get into that when it's time. But first I'm gonna line my lips with the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk 2 Medium Liner. Okay, I haven't tried these yet, so I'm curious to see what this is going to feel like. Oh, <laughs> got some on my nose. Doesn't have any scent to it. Oh, oh. This is just not my day. <laughs> Reminds me of MAC Snob. It's a very, very cool tone pink. 2015 Jamie would have loved this. Instead, we are going to put on Blushing Pop, which is much warmer and less of a cool tone pink. This is the type of color that I've been, that I would typically go for, but I was trying to do something new and it just backfired on me. Formula feels really good. It feels like a very lightweight and hydrating lipstick. I do like this color. That first one just was not, it was not it. <laughs> but we're gonna top it off with 
this baby. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Big Lip Plumpgasm. Okay, look at this lip gloss. Look at this packaging, first of all. This is like such a chunky lip gloss packaging. You have like a quilted feature on the cap, which is so fun. I'm honestly a little bit conflicted with these because the way that these look on the lips are beautiful. They are so shiny. This is a plumping lip gloss. So there is a little bit of like that burny tingly sensation, which, which I don't love. But because it looks so good, I've kind of been looking past or rather trying not to focus too much on that burning feeling that I that I get on my lips when I do wear it. So keep that in mind with this product, you are gonna get that, that little tingle. This shade is Pillow Talk Fair Medium, and it is like the perfect light nude gloss. It smells really good too, it smells like vanilla. Oh, and it complements this lipstick, perfect. Like look at that shine. Mm. So that's actually everything that I have to talk about today. I think the real winner of this video is the thermal brush. I would also like to add that the skin tint feels very slick on my face. Like if I were to take my hand and just rub my face, it feels like I would just wipe it all off. And I really don't love that feeling. I prefer it when my skin tints or my foundation at least somewhat sets down where, where I don't feel like I'm going to wipe it off <laughs> accidentally throughout the day. I don't really love that tackier feeling that this is giving me. So my opinion still stands on the skin tint. I'm just not, not loving it as much as I feel like everybody else is right now. But either way, I hope you enjoyed hearing all of my thoughts. Don't forget to let me know all of your thoughts in the comments and hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed and subscribe if you wanna see more from me. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.